Hi, I'm Matt Dario of Epic Real Estate. And if you're here right now, you're here for a reason. And that reason is likely because you're looking for, say, I don't know, what's missing in your life that's going to finally deliver you to wealth's front door. And I want you to know you're not alone. I mean, I too was very much in your shoes once. In fact, you know, whether people admit it or not, a lot of people don't like to admit it, they all want to be rich. They all want to be wealthy. They want to be financially independent and, you know, whatever you want to call it. Ultimately, what everybody wants is freedom. That's what they're seeking. And everybody does want it. Everybody wants it to the point that they're spending millions and millions of dollars a year on books and seminars, coaches, programs, what have you, to learn how to get it. I mean, they want it so badly, but none of them ever get it. Sure, there are exceptions. 1%, 1% actually does figure it out. And that statistic 1% is not a made up stat either. It is just 1% of the population that achieves a financial status that can be classified as wealthy. And that's a problem. It's a problem for all of those people that are trying to figure it out. You know, and if wealth has eluded you for any length of time, whether it's been three months, three years, three decades, it's your problem too. It's frustrating, I know. Because, you know, really most people just simply don't know what to do. Sure, they have an idea as to what to do. They might have even backed up their idea with some real action, but to no avail. And then they give up. Or they just take their eye off the prize and then, you know, life gets in the way. It happens. And the reason this happens is they're not totally certain that their idea of achieving wealth will actually work. And if there's doubt in your approach, there will be gaps or breakdowns in your commitment to your approach. And it's also frustrating because most people, they're really busy. I mean, they can barely make time for themselves given their family obligations, their work obligations, their social obligations. I mean, where's there any real time left to do what you gotta do to achieve wealth? And finally, it's frustrating because a commonly held core belief in our society is that it takes money to make money. You know, so few people have any extra these days to apply it to their wealthy aspirations. And that really doesn't matter whether you're making $30,000 a year or $300,000 a year. Many more times than not, the person making $300,000 a year experiences all of the same worries and concerns as the person making $30,000 a year, as they're broke too, just at a higher level. You know, because as our incomes rise, so do our expenses, they tend to follow suit, don't they? So you take all of that and you put it together and it's no wonder 99% of the population never figures it out. I mean, they live in constant fear that they'll never get out of the rat race or, or they lose sleep thinking they'll never even get to even slightly take their foot off the gas a little bit. And if they do happen to, you know, take control and force a slowdown and willfully not work so hard, they cringe at the thought of what they're going to have to give up as a result. You know, like, like they might have to move to a smaller house or a different zip code, which means different schools for the kids. They'll have fewer nights out with the spouse. They'll have to limit or, or give up entirely those extended traveling vacations that they like so much. They may have to shop at different stores. They might have to downsize their car. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And it's, it's, it's sacrifices like these this overall uncertainty that just really scares people as they get older, and regardless of their age right now even. And unless they find a solution, it's not going to get any better. It will not fix itself. Hope is a terrible strategy for this. As you'll see a little later, the statistics support that idea fairly convincingly. Now, as I was in your shoes once, and I happen to now be a member of that 1% that I spoke about, the 1% that breaks through and achieves a life of financial freedom, I wanna share with you how I did it. But not just how I did it, how most successful people do it. You see, in your pursuit to wealth, you have two options. You can either, one, follow the minority of successful people and innovate your way to wealth, or two, follow the majority of successful people and imitate your way to wealth. In other words, if you want what someone else has, you merely have to just do what they did in the manner that they did it. And right there lies a fantastic probability that you'll get the same, similar, or even better results. You know, 
I've been sharing how I did it with thousands of people for the last few years in small group get-together type settings with, with greater results that even I, Mr. Optimistic, ever could have imagined. So now I want to share it with millions via this short video that I put together. Oh, and there's nothing for sale here, by the way. I mean, certainly if you want our support, it would be only fair that we'd get some sort of compensation in return for our time. But what I'm about to share with you, it's 100% complete. I mean, you can take it, you can run with it, you can create your own financial freedom all on your own with it. So relax, grab a pen, grab some paper, because you will want to write some of this stuff down. And uh, here's what I promise. This is what I promise to give you over the next 20 minutes. That's it, 20 minutes, okay? I'm gonna give you a new idea, a new approach to how you can go about pursuing and creating your wealth. And it's only this one idea that you're gonna need. I mean, if you change your mind about this one thing, just one time, you can achieve your financial independence in one-tenth the time that most people are going about it. Now, I know what you're thinking already, right? This is gonna be some get-rich-quick pitch. No, it's not that, not at all. It is, however, a get-rich-quicker and permanently training. Remember, nothing for sale here. I'm also going to give you a specific action to take. And at the most, just twice a year, that's all you gotta do. And what that's gonna do is rather easily that will provide you with the nation's median annual household income within just four years. And on a passive basis, meaning that monthly income will be yours each and every year in addition to whatever else it is that, that you decide to do for income. Now, you can certainly take this action more than twice a year the sky is the limit, do it as much as you want, but, but just twice a year, that's the minimum, and that's gonna create for you in four years what 99% of the population is failing to do in 40 years. And should you be in a position to where money is an issue, and you come from that mindset that it takes money to make money, you're going to love this. Because I didn't have very much money to begin with when my mentor first shared all of this with me nor did many of the people that I've helped to become financially independent since. So, with all of this together, what's available for you is a solid approach to your financial independence that you can actually sink your teeth into. Something tangible, something that you can get behind with confidence, and get behind that with confidence in a way that you can comfortably commit to, and eliminate all of those fears. All of those fears disappear when you make this one small adjustment and take this specific action that I'm about to show you just twice a year. Just take this action twice a year and that's what's available for you. So what part of this do you need right now? You know, however you answer that, don't worry, we're gonna cover it all. Are you ready? Let's get started. I'll meet you on the inside, okay? Have you ever wondered why there are so many TV shows on flipping houses and none on holding them? Or have you ever wondered why if real estate has created more millionaires and billionaires than any other industry or investment vehicle, why is real estate so commonly referred to as a risky investment? You know, if real estate has worked for more people than anything else, why is it considered risky? When something like a mutual fund or a bond doesn't have that stigma, real estate has produced far more wealth for far more people than mutual funds or bonds have combined. Doesn't really make sense, does it? I'm Matt Terrio of Epic Real Estate, and real estate is my business in many capacities. These are the types of things I think about daily. And one of those things that really causes me to scratch my head is why so many people credit the book Rich Dad Poor Dad for opening their eyes to the power of cash flow, yet so few of those people actually pursue it. Meaning they're not involved in the daily activities required to create cash flow. Where's the disconnect? Imagine this, if today the traffic laws changed and you were to now go on the red lights and stop on the green ones, what action would you take when approaching your very next traffic signal? Would you abide by the new law or would you continue to go on the green? You're smart enough to know to now stop on the green, right? If you didn't, you'd eventually die in a car collision, wouldn't you? If you didn't die, you'd certainly experience a serious injury. So my next question is, are you abiding by today's new financial laws? 
More than 95% of the population is not, and a fatal financial collision for them is imminent. In fact, thousands are dying daily, right now. Thousands of people are losing small and sometimes large fortunes daily, and they don't have to be. This is happening because they're still operating under the mentality that served those a few generations before us very well, our parents. They were taught to get a government job with great benefits and a pension. They were taught that doing that would give them security. And if they played their cards right in the stock market, they could become wealthy even. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with the history lesson of what keeps happening to the stock market. You all were awake in 2007, right? You know what happened then. And you've heard what happened in the 70s and much further back. But it's not the uncertainty of the stock market that has changed the rules. You see, over the last 4,000 years, the only period in which humanity has not consistently based its currency in metal, specifically gold, is the last 45 years or so. That's right. Ever since President Richard Nixon announced in 1971 that the U.S. would no longer officially trade dollars for gold, we've been forced to play a new game. But they didn't give us the rules. It's a game of which very few have shared with the vast public the rules of the new game. And if you blinked, you totally missed it. And it's those new rules, the new laws, that I'm going to share with you right now. And I'm going to explain it in a way that's so simple a fifth grader could understand it. There's a very simple plan that anyone can follow to produce a future of financial independence. And when I mention future, I'm not referring to 40 years from now. Not 30 years either. Not 20? Nope, not even 10. Yes, in less than 10 years, anyone can be financially free, forever. Anyone can do it. However, not everyone will. Will you? No need to answer that at this moment. Let's run through a few things real quick so you know exactly what I'm talking about and how it impacts you and your future. Before I share with you the faster and more certain path to financial freedom, I'm gonna make one request. I'm gonna request that you place all of your preconceived notions about real estate to the side. And imagine a life when the alarm clock goes off every morning where you can decide to roll out of bed or just roll over. Or throw the alarm clock out the window and never awake to it again. How does that sound? That is indeed within the realm of possibility. But stick with me to the end and we'll shift what's possible for you into the realm of probability. Last thing, this is not a get rich pitch, by the way. It is a get rich permanently training. I am the founder of Epic Real Estate, Cashflow Savvy, and the Epic Pro Academy. And many of you may actually follow my iTunes podcast, Epic Real Estate Investing. If not, I invite you to subscribe. It's free and it's the number one podcast on the subject of real estate investing. Here's a picture of me and Robert Kiyosaki working on a recent project. Robert is the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the book I mentioned earlier, and an amazing entrepreneur, and the catalyst for so many other entrepreneur starts. And together, we've been able to share the idea of cash flow, the importance of financial education, and how and why real estate is a favorite investment of the wealthiest 1% of the population. And we've been able to share that message with millions of people. Over the past four years, I've been able to work with many other amazing people, build a powerful portfolio of my own, and teach thousands the methods and strategies that I use every day, to this day. You see, back when I got out of the Marine Corps, I spent the next 13 years of my life in the music business. I had a small little record label backed by major label distribution, and I had made my million by age 30. Music created a great life for me, and I'd still probably be there if it weren't for the advent of the digital download. To make a long and complicated story really short, you know how the music video killed the radio star? Well, the digital download killed the music store. And when the music store died, so did my business. So at age 34, after throwing every penny I had at my business trying to save it, to no avail, I found myself bagging groceries. In just a year, my seven-figure business had become obsolete. And I was bagging groceries for $7 an hour. That's one thing I like about real estate, by the way. It's not going anywhere like records, tapes, and compact discs did. People will always need a place to live and lay their head. Anyway, after about six months of feeling sorry for myself, the most remarkable words I had ever heard came from one of the most unlikely sources, the grocery store manager. And he said, real estate has produced more millionaires and billionaires than any other industry or investment vehicle. In fact, Real estate is the final frontier where the average person has a legitimate shot at creating real wealth. 
I had been searching for a while for the answer. And there it was. I can remember it like it was yesterday, those magic words, real estate. I dug in that night and I've never looked back. I spent my first four years in real estate as an agent, and that was a big mistake. The money was decent, but the hours to make that money were grueling. And after four years witnessing the obscene amounts of money my investor clients were making, I realized that if real estate is where all the money's at, I'm sitting on the wrong side of the desk. So that was the big turning point for me. It was time to become a real estate investor myself. I completed my first deal within 60 days, putting $26,000 in my pocket, and I was hooked. And fast forward four years, with more than 100 real estate investor transactions under my belt, I had been able to amass a cash flowing real estate portfolio of which the monthly income generated by that portfolio exceeded my monthly expenses and ultimately freed me from the rat race. It's been more than five years since I have exited the rat race and my real estate holdings have more than tripled. I'm truly free from financial worries. And if you're still listening to me, I imagine freedom is something you're after as well. I'm not surprised. It's what everyone wants. But what I find so amazing is the fact that everyone wants it so badly, but so few actually have it or ever get it. Here, take a look at this chart provided by the Department of Health and Human Services. Seeing this chart for the first time was a powerful moment for me. This pie chart represents today's 65 year olds. 54%, more than half of them are dependent either on their church, their family, or their government to subsidize their living. 36% are still working, and we know what types of jobs are available to 65 plus year olds, right? May I take your order or welcome to Walmart. Those are phrases that come to mind. 5% are no longer with us. They're deceased. 4% actually do manage to achieve a status of financial independence. But don't get too excited yet. Per the government's definition of financial independence, all it means is that your investments spin off a minimum of $36,000 per year. That's it. $36,000 a year. I don't know about you, but I live in California. There's no chance of retiring in California at $36,000 a year. I'd have to change zip codes for sure and still likely take in a roommate or two. There are very few places in America where $36,000 a year can provide a comfortable lifestyle. The last piece of the pie belongs to the 1%. Only 1% of our population that hits the age of 65 are considered wealthy, having a net worth of $5 million or more. In a minute, you'll see why that's nothing to jump up and down for either. The point I wanna to make to you by showing you this pie chart is that 99% of our society is failing financially. And the reason why is that they're playing by the old rules of money. And we really don't have to look any further than your personal definition of wealth. Most of us were raised thinking to be wealthy meant you had a big pile of cash somewhere. Now that may have been true a while ago, actually some time ago. But without getting too deep into the economics, in a nutshell, it's like this. When Richard Nixon took the United States dollar off the gold standard, it essentially guaranteed inflation. And it was from this day forward that the pile of cash people started to lose because it is inflation that now causes savers of money to actually be losers of money. Those that work, 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 and save, save, save in accounts like 401ks, IRAs, and other qualified retirement accounts are in for a very rude awakening when it comes time to reflect and count the rewards of their efforts. So what to do? It's actually very simple. You need to do only one thing just one time. Shift your focus from making piles of cash to creating streams of cash. Make that one shift one time and support it with correlate action and the new rules of money will be working in your favor. Here, I'll show you what I mean. It's rather ironic that we are all taught to save a giant pile of money with creating streams of money being the goal. I mean, that's the goal, to create the residual income. We're taught to go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a good job, and work, 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 and save, 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 live below our means, clip coupons, buy used cars, limit our trips to Starbucks, because that adds up, you know? We're basically told to wait to live our life until our pile of money is so high that it can then spin off a residual income of which will allow you to live later, right around the age of 65. Once the best and most active years of your life are behind you. That's what we were taught. It's what we were told to do. And per the pie chart I showed you, 99% of the population is failing with this approach. So let's try a different approach. Rather than 
focusing on the pile of cash to create the stream of cash. Let's flip that equation around and focus on the stream of cash to create the pile of cash. And what you get is the same result, or I should say the same result that is promised, but even better, meaning you still get to live later in life, but you also get to live now. After all, when is life happening? Now, right? Let's plug in some numbers and I'll show you what I mean. I'll start by just using the national median household income of $48,000. And we'll break that down to a monthly residual income goal of $4,000 a month. That's the goal. Now, based on what most financial planners today will conservatively tell you the type of return you can expect in retirement, somewhere between 3 and 5%, I'm going to go ahead and use 4%. I'm not sure where the average person can get a 4% return these days, but let's just say that type of investment is readily available. How much money will you have to save to generate $4,000 a month in income at that 4% interest rate? I'll do the math for you. You'll have to save $1.2 million. Now, before I go any further, let me ask you, how are you doing? Are you on track to hit this number by the age of 65? Per the stats, you are not. Now, rather than focusing on saving this $1.2 million, let's forget that number entirely and just focus on the $4,000 of monthly residual income. Which one seems easier? Saving $1.2 million of cash or creating $4,000 of monthly cash flow? And this is not a trick question either. It seems exponentially easier to create $4,000 of monthly cash flow, doesn't it? So, if it's so much easier, why don't more people do it? The simple answers are either one, this approach has never been explained to them, and or two, they just don't know how to execute it. I think there's a fair amount of truth in both statements, but even if you were to walk away from here today knowing and understanding everything that I've just showed you, I have a theory as to why you still will probably fail. And by you failing doesn't mean you're bad, doesn't mean you're dumb, has nothing to do with what type of person you are. The reason you'll likely fail has to do more with the decades and decades of your money conditioning. Here's how I can explain it in the simplest way that I know. People confuse cash with cash flow. They think $500 of cash equals $500 of cash flow. And here's what I mean. As a real estate investor, when I'm presented a deal, a common decision for me to make is, should I flip this deal for $30,000 of cash profit or hold on to it for $500 of monthly cash flow profit? What would you do? Would you take the $30,000 of cash or the $500 of monthly cash flow? Most people's instinct is to take the $30,000 of cash. The money can be very seducing especially in real estate, because these are everyday numbers real estate investors deal with. And I admit, $500 of cash isn't very exciting. It doesn't get much these days. I mean, for me, that would be a new pair of Air Jordans and a moderate night out with the missus. But what I could do with that $30,000, now that's exciting. And there lies the trap. You see, I'm not talking about $500 of cash. I'm talking about $500 of cash flow. How much cash do you need in that 4% interest investment that I mentioned earlier to create $500 of monthly cash flow? You need $150,000 of cash. So $500 of cash flow does not equal $500 of cash. $500 of cash flow equals $150,000 of cash. So the better question would be, would you take the $30,000 of cash or the $150,000 of cash? I mean, now that we're comparing apples to apples, it's a no-brainer, right? If you're ever to hit that $4,000 of monthly cash flow, you have to start by choosing that first $500 stream of cash. You have to start with the first stream. Even if it's a trickle, it's the only way that that stream can ever become a raging river of cash flow, providing you a life that to this point, you've only dreamt about. But you gotta start. You've got to get the first one so that you can add the second, the third, and the fourth on top of it. People just never get started because the first one seems so insignificant and boring. 
And there's the challenge. Let's go back to our pie chart and look at what this 1% of our population is doing. For we know that if we do what someone else does in the manner that they do it, it's highly likely we'll get a similar result. Success leaves clues goes the saying. Here, more appropriate the saying, success leaves evidence. 74% of this 1% are business owners and they either made or preserve their money in real estate. In other words, they're streams of cash creators. They understand the new rules of money and they play by them. That's why they're the 1%. When I first saw this, it was easy for me to take that next step in pursuit of my financial independence. So I doubled down. I started a business that invests in real estate. And here's how I started. I started and I started with one rental house. Then I got another and then I did it again and I continued to repeat the process. Once I got to a dozen properties or so, I diversified my markets. A lesson I learned when I was in the music business. You know, what ultimately led me to my demise in music wasn't entirely the digital download, but also that within my business, I had a single point of failure. I had just one distributor of my music. And when that distributor went under, so did my business. I was determined to not make that same mistake twice. So I started investing in a different market that was geographically and economically distant from my first market. Then I diversified my teams within those markets. I split my portfolio up amongst multiple property managers. And then I diversified my property types. I started adding duplexes, fourplexes, and multifamily properties to my portfolio. And after a little more than three and a half years, my real estate portfolio had spanned over five markets, nine different teams, and four different property types and the monthly cash flow generated from that portfolio exceeded my monthly expenses. I was officially out of the rat race. And more than five years since making my exit, I continued to build my own monthly cash flow and the cash flowing portfolios of others, primarily people too busy to do it themselves. And I do it in the exact same manner that I built my own portfolio. And my operation now looks like this. I'm working currently in 10 different markets, and here are five of them. In each market, I have a project manager that manages my teams. Each team consists of a property manager, a contractor, and a realtor. Each team is aware of the other's existence, and I do this intentionally because I found that this inherent element of competition increases performance and decreases expenses. And my clients and I benefit significantly from this. You see, in many of my markets, the combined portfolios of my clients and my personal holdings make up a significant portion of each team's business. And I've found this to result in frequent preferential treatment. Simply put, my clients and I are able to leverage each other's portfolio for stellar management of our assets. And I have the same setup in each market. No more single points of failure from me. So here's a simple plan to create a $4,000 monthly stream of cash. It's fairly easy for us to find houses that generate $500 a monthly cash flow. So it only take eight of these houses to achieve the $4,000 goal. At an average sales price of $50,000, it would only take $400,000 to achieve the goal. This is just basic quick and dirty math, but you get the point. If you were to implement leverage into the equation, this goal could be achieved with significantly less than $400,000. The lesson I hope you walk away with here today is, by shifting your focus from a pile of cash mentality to a stream of cash mentality, you were able to create with $400,000 what would have required $1.2 million. And you did it in one-tenth the time. As I began this lesson with the statement, this is not get rich quick, nor is it easy. Both approaches take some serious effort. But for how long do you want to exert that effort to reach your goal? That's the question. How long do you want to exert that effort to reach your goal? 40 years with the pile of cash mentality or four years with the stream of cash mentality? More accurately, this approach could be referenced as not get rich quick, but get rich quicker and permanently. So to fill in the blank of the headline that got you here, flipping houses might make you rich, but holding them will make you wealthy permanently. So how do you get started? You could take this information and run with it on your own. That'd be perfectly okay with me. Or if you'd like some support, here are the three options in working with us. One, go to epicproacademy.com. 
where I'll show you step-by-step -step how to do it yourself. Or two, go to cashflowsavvy.com where we'll do it with you. I mean, you call the shots, we'll do all the work. Or three, go to epicwealthfund.com where we'll do it all for you. Select the option that best suits you and we'll chat soon. Take care.